has God helped you in the months that are past? Have you received any help from God at all? If we put our trust in men, they can disappoint us. In fact, he tells us, man is limited. God of Jacob, who is our God, he lives forevermore. He is our helper. He is our helper. For anyone who may believe, the days have come. From wherever you are listening to me, God has sent me to you and to let you know, you shall be remembered for favor. I say you shall be remembered to be favor. Lord, praise the Lord. Um, thank God they didn't introduce me as a guest minister because I'm not a guest. Uh, you, you can't be a guest when you come to your own house. Praise the Lord. And I want to appreciate the almighty God um, for this privilege, I want to thank um, the leadership of the church that has given me this opportunity, um, starting from our D.O., Reverend Idowu. Um, I understand he's not around this morning, but I want to appreciate him and the council and uh, the youth ministry um, for this little setup that they said I should come and uh, speak to you this morning. I pray that as I speak, as the Holy Spirit ministers, that will be blessed in Jesus' name. Um, there are so many familiar faces in the congregation. Time will not permit me to start calling the different names, but please, I appreciate every one of you. Um, I'm sure you know that I consider many of you here as my parents, as my senior brothers, and my senior sisters, and I just want to say God bless you. And as we spend the next few minutes with the Holy Spirit, it will open our, our eyes to new insight in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We don't have too much time this morning. And um, we'll be talking and be looking a little further into our theme for the month that says divine sustainer. Divine sustainer. It's taken from Nehemiah chapter 9. Um, I know in the course of the month, we'll have read that scripture over and over again. And I know that we even had one week dealing with God as our divine sustainer. And then what we'll quickly do this morning is just to go a step further on learning about how to keep that divine sustainer. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can you just bow your heads and just talk to God and say, God, I'm here. Please speak to me. I'm here. Please speak to me. I have come to listen to you. I have come to hear from you. I have come to draw from you. Just speak to me. Even if it's one word, one word that you will get this morning, ask the Holy Spirit to minister to you. Ask the Holy Spirit to minister to you. Ask the Holy Spirit to minister to you. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Everlasting Father, I want to appreciate you. I want to thank you once again for another time to learn at your feet. Thank you, Lord, for sustaining us even to this period. We magnify your holy name. We we'll bless your holy name. Please accept our thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Father, as we go into your word, we ask that you minister to us, both the speaker and the hearer, that you will give us grace to be effective doers of your word in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask that you will receive all the glory, all the adoration, and your name will be praised forevermore. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Can you say a more believing name? In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Divine sustenance. And um, if you look at that theme, that phrase, it's broken into two words. Divine sustenance. And if we try to define what sustenance is, you know, I try to look at the dictionary that to say, I try to Google what is sustenance. And you know what he said? He said the act of maintaining something, the act of keeping something, the act of supporting something. And if you look at that word very well, you would know that there's no body that does not need sustenance. If not, why do we eat every day? 
Why do we drink water every day? Why do we even go to bed to sleep every day? If you don't do those things, it's difficult to maintain your body. And at every point in time, there's a need for us to sustain ourselves. Every living thing has a way of sustaining itself, be it an animal, be it a plant, whatever it is. And if you go a step further, sustenance could mean a type of support. Everybody needs support. That is why we go to work every day. That is why we go to school. That is why we do things to keep our brains fresh. And somebody said that the day you stop learning is the day you start dying. Because the moment your brain, your mind is not kept active, that mind begins to decay. Everybody needs a form of sustenance. Even though you are the richest man in the world, you need sustenance. The second word in that phrase is divine, and divine simply means an act of God. An act of God. It is something beyond the ordinary, beyond the natural eye. An act of God. So if you put those two words together, we are asking, we are telling God that this is the act of keeping beyond the natural eye. And if you read that Nehemiah chapter 9 properly, especially from 19 to 24, where our team is taken from, you will see that those things that the Bible was saying, truly, truly, it was an act of God. How can somebody take 40 years and his leg will not get swollen. How can he trek 40 years? The clothes did not get old. It is purely, purely an act of God. And we must come to that reality for us to enjoy divine sustenance. But let me tell you this quickly. Do you know that is not only God is not the only source? Of sustenance. God is not the only source of sustenance. If not, why do people go to get powers from the dark world? God is not the only source. But of course, we're not going into that this morning. Divine sustenance is the act of keeping and supporting and maintaining. Praise the Lord. Are we still here? Are we still here? You know, when I was much younger, um, I just crossed from GS3 to SS1. And you know, when you get to SS1, that's when they start pushing you whether you're going into science, into commercial, into, into the like. And then, um, you know, I was a sharp guy. So <laughs> I went into science. And then uh, SS1 first term, we did chemistry. And uh, when the results came out, I can't forget, SS1 chemistry. I was the best in the whole class, in the whole SS1, obviously. I was the best in the whole SS1. Ah, people came to AO me and say, hey, guy, Sabi. And there was one of my classmates was a lady, and she came to meet me and said, ah, how did you get, I think I got maybe 38 and a half over 40 um, in the exam, something like that. She got maybe 37. And then she was saying, how, how, how did you pass? How did you, which, you know the way we do it when we're in school now, you begin to compare notes, you begin to compare scripts, and begin to check what went wrong. And you know, one of my seniors in SS2 came to meet me, and he said, ah, congratulations, Lou. this is just first term. There's still second term, there's still third term. And you know, at the end of third term, they do prize giving. 
and then they give best in math, best in English, best in chemistry, best in physics. And then she was say, watch out. Watch out that I'm coming, I'm coming for you. And there's a school guy came to meet me and said, ah, please, you need to keep it all. I was like you when I was in SS1. I was, I too was the best in first term. But somebody came to him. They are, do not chemistry. Second term came, third term came. And, uh, well, to put the long story short, they didn't call my name for best in chemistry. Uh, and uh, my father came to meet me. Ah, I thought you said you were good in chemistry. I said I am. Why did they call your name? I was not able to sustain it. And you see, whatever it is you have today, there's the need for you to keep that sustenance. Because the Bible says that the devil is moving around. Moving around. John 10, 10. And it says the devil has come to do what? To steal, to kill, to destroy. Which means whatever you have, the devil is looking to steal, to kill, to destroy. So there's a need to sustain that which that you have. And briefly in the next few minutes, what we're going to look at is the ABC of keeping divine sustenance. ABC. Foundation of keeping divine sustenance. The ABC. That's where I titled it. Of keeping, of, of, of enjoying, let me put it that way, divine sustenance. Are we together? Before I go into the first item, let me share this. Divine sustenance is a complete act of God, and it's at his discretion. God is a sovereign God. He decides what he wants to do. He decides who he wants to have mercy on. He decides who he wants to have compassion on. He's simply a sovereign act of the Almighty God. However, however, there are things that we can do to influence God's decision. And how do I know this? Second Kings chapter 20. We won't read it because of our time, but we can take it down. Second Kings 20, the first, maybe the first eight, nine verses of that chapter. And it talks about a king, King Hezekiah. Bible said he was very sick. And, uh, oh yeah, thank you. He was very sick. And uh, the prophet, Isaiah, went to go and meet him. And he said, ah, this your sickness is unto death. Hezekiah went back to God. Hezekiah did not talk to the prophet that delivered the message. He went to God and said, God, you want to kill me? Look at all the things I've done. And you see what Ezekiah did. He just showed, for you know when you're in school, they say, show God your walking. X plus X equals to 2X. Show walking. Ezekiah just showed walking. And that's why it is necessary for us to have walkings before God because that's what we present. And this guy showed walkings and said, God, you cannot kill me now. And the Bible said, God did not talk to Ezekiah again. God spoke to the prophet, Isaiah. The same prophet that said he would die in X number of days came back and said, God has added 15 years to your life. Is that not sustenance? Somebody that was supposed to die in a few days, the prophecy had gone out. But what he did was that he went to influence and God prolonged his life for another 15 years. And if you read down that chapter, you see that Ezekiah went to battle and won those battles. The ABC of enjoying divine sustenance. Number one, A, you must first of all acknowledge and accept that divine sustenance is an act of God. You must first of all acknowledge and accept. If you read that Nehemiah chapter 9 properly, maybe around verse 7, um, verse 17, sorry, verse 16, verse 17, 
of that chapter, you would see very well that when the writer was writing, when the prophet was speaking, he says the Israelites for God, the God that brought them out of the land of Egypt. And they started worshipping idols. You can see this again in the book of Exodus. When Moses went up to the mountain to go and receive the Ten Commandments, the Bible says that the Israelites were murmuring, they were getting scared, and then they created a golden image and started worshipping it and started saying that, ah, this is the God that brought us out of the land of Egypt. They had forgotten how God rescued them from slavery. Many of us, because of where we are looking at, we have forgotten where God brought you from. And it becomes difficult to appreciate him. Oh, because, hey, I intended to do X, Y, and Z by the end of 2023. You forget all what God has done for you. And that was what the Israelites did. They forgot. What happened after? When Moses came down, and Moses said, who is on the Lord's side? I'm on the Lord's side. He, the ground opened up. All the people that went on the Lord's side. Those people were not part of the 40. The part of the people that joined the 40 years. They were not sustained. They were not kept. All because they failed to acknowledge and accept the hand of God. And if you look at Luke chapter 12, 13 to 21, there's another parable that Jesus Christ was talking about. I mean, many of us, we call it the rich fool. What did he do? A guy woke up one morning and said, Hey, I have arrived. I will tear down this barn, build up new ones, and then this thing. You know what God said? They are, you fool, your soul is required of you tonight. And the guy slept, did not wake up the next day. Divine sustainer. If you don't acknowledge and accept that it is the hand of God that has brought you to where you are, you might be making a great mistake. And it is key that we understand this because this is what helps us to appreciate God. That's why when they say people appreciate God, you say, what do, I have God, what do I have to appreciate God for? What do I have to give thanks for? You have forgotten where he brought you from. If not for God, I was reading a, I, was, I saw a picture over the weekend. And the person said, in this country, in this economy, what is keeping you sane? And the person replied, it's Jesus so. If not for Jesus, I for Don Kolo. It is Jesus Christ that kept some of us sane this period. Because if not the hand of God in some of our lives, we might not even be standing here today. And you must acknowledge that fact. You must accept that fact. That you have nothing to do. It is all because of God. Quickly, let me run number, number two item, which is the B. You know, I said it's the A, B, C. The B. You must build capacity. You must build capacity. Brethren, divine sustenance is dependent on the capacity that you have. David recorded 60, about 60 battles in the Bible. The Bible says he did not lose a single battle, starting from when he fought Goliath. Three of us. Three of us. But do you know that that was not his first battle, Goliath? Because when he came to confront Goliath in 1 Samuel chapter 17, what he told Goliath, he said, Goliath, the God that delivered me from the lion and from the bear is going to deliver me from you. Which means David was there, building capacity, building his strength, building his power. Second Kings chapter seven. Second Kings chapter no sorry chapter four one to seven. There's a story of a widow, 
And then the Bible said that, oh, she died, uh, her husband died. And the husband was in debt. And she ran to the prophet Elisha. And the prophet said, ah, go and bring all the bowls you have in your house. The woman said, I have only one bowl. She said, go and borrow. Go and borrow all the bowls that I can borrow. Take this jar of oil and start pouring. And the woman was pouring, was pouring, was pouring, was pouring. Until one of the sons came and said, there's no more bowl. Do you see what the Bible said after that? The oil stopped. Assuming there was still an extra bowl, the oil was going to continue. But the moment bowl finished, oil stopped. And it goes to show that your sustenance is dependent. On the capacity, because it is the capacity that you have built. That is what God will give you. That's what God will use to sustain you. Build capacity. Build capacity. And how do we build capacity? We are going to the third item. C. What is A again? Who can remind us? What is B? C, consistently be connected. You must consistently be connected to enjoy divine. And that is how you build your capacity. That is how you build your capacity. And one thing I wrote down here, I said be focused. Because when you are connected, you are focused. Matthew chapter 14, I think from verse 19, there's a story, you know, Jesus Christ just finished feeding the 5,000, and he told the disciples to go ahead of him, and then they crossed the sea, and then when there was waves, when was this thing? Jesus Christ began walking on water. The disciples were, ah, is that a ghost? Is that a this? Is that a that? And Peter, very sharp guy, very bold guy, said, ah, Lord, if it is you, ask me to come. Jesus Christ said, come. And the Bible was clear. Peter was walking on water. But the moment Peter took his eyes off Jesus Christ, the Bible says that the moment he began to see, I love the way King James put it, the boisterous wind. The moment he began to see the boisterous wind, he began to sink. No more sustenance. No more sustenance. As long as Peter was looking at Jesus Christ, he was sustained on that water. But the moment he looked away, he began to sink. And that's why Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2 says that looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher. And that version says the beginning and the completeness of our faith. That is how you stay connected. That is how you build capacity by being connected. Looking unto Jesus, this is not the time to look at the economy. I was having some conversations last week with some people, and I don't know why, okay, maybe because we're in the season, everybody was just talking about school fees, school fees, school fees. Me said, I don't pay school fees. You know, everybody was talking about school fees and the rest. And um, I know many of our youth cannot relate because they've not got to my, but that's the story for another day. But when they were discussing, they were talking about the amount of school fees now, Somebody was saying school fees for a three-year-old is six million, and that person say it's four million. I said, okay, that's very good. But if I ask all the parents that are here, if you look back, if you are looking at economy, how many of you will have paid your children's school fees? Somehow, somehow, the sustenance came. You found a way. You paid school fees. Somehow, somehow. They went to secondary school. 
Some of them, they went to university. Some of them, some even went abroad. But if you are looking at your pocket, if you are looking at how much dollar, if you are looking at this, you see, you won't be able to achieve those things. But the moment you began to look at Jesus Christ, how those things happen, if you look back, I'm sure some of you cannot explain it. Some of you cannot explain how you, some of your children went. How the money came. It shows it was a, a divine act of God. It means that there is a reason for us looking at Jesus Christ and not looking at the dollar to naira rate. There's a reason for looking at Jesus Christ and not looking at how much wealth is per liter. Bible was clear. Looking on to Jesus. And as Peter was walking on water, his eyes were fixed on Jesus Christ. But the moment he looked away, You must stay connected to Jesus Christ. And how do we stay connected to Jesus Christ as around us? Just the basics. We call them the basics. Read your Bible. Pray every day. Abby? Pray every day. Pray every day. Read your Bible. Pray every day. If you watch. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. The more you feed on the word of God, the more capacity you are building yourself. That was what David was doing. David did not go to any military training like his brothers. David simply, simply stayed with God in the wilderness. While he was taking care of sheep, he was writing Psalm, spending time with God. There's a passage I love so much in 2 Samuel chapter 18. And the Bible says, and David went in and sat before God. I've always asked myself, how do people sit before God? That means God was so real, like this table to David. That's what the Bible said. But it, and he went in and sat before God. How real is God? Because some, some of us, the moment... You pray one prayer, God does not answer. You think that God does not exist. But to stay connected, you must constantly feed on his word. You must constantly talk to God. You must constantly be with him. What is A again? What is B? What is C? Can you just bow your head and talk to God? Can you just bow your head and talk to God this morning? Because the journey is still far. The God told Elijah, he said, eat, because the journey is far. Some of us, the journey is still quite far. Can you just ask him to help you to build capacity for the journey? Because that is what is required for divine sustenance. And peradventure, there's somebody here that wants to renew his connection to God. There's somebody that wants to renew his connection. You know you are not connected to God. You know you don't have a connection with him. Or you had a connection before and it was broken off. I want you to take that step of faith and just come forward quickly. If you want to reestablish that connection with God, if there's anybody, please just come forward. If many of us, let's talk to God to help us in building our capacity. And for adventure, you have forgotten what God has done. You have forgotten that it is God that brought you here, that has brought you to this level. You might need to ask God for mercy. You might need to ask God for mercy. Talk to him, talk to him, just under one minute that we have left. Just talk to him. Just talk to him. 
just talk to him to help you in building your capacity because the journey is still quite far and if you look at the things that happen around us the journey does not seem palatable but you need God to sustain you just like the way he sustained the people of Israel that they trekked 40 years their legs did not get off they trekked 40 years their clothes were not torn or ragged that is the God that we are talking to this morning that's the God that we are talking to this morning In Jesus' name, we are free. Father, we want to say thank you, Lord, for this word of exhortation that you have given to us. Thank you, Lord, for your word that has come directly from your throne of grace. We ask Holy Spirit, Lord, that where we need to make amends, you will help us. In the name of Jesus. Where we need to adjust, you will help us. In the name of Jesus, perhaps we have forgotten some of the wondrous work that you have done for us. Perhaps we have failed in acknowledging your hand, particularly in certain situations in our life. We ask that you show us mercy in the name of Jesus. We ask God as we move from here this morning, you will help us to build our capacity in you. You will help us to build our belief in you. You will help us to build our strength in you in the name of Jesus. We ask, Lord, that you give us the strength to fight against every form of distraction that wants to take our face away from you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayers. We give you glory and adoration. For in Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Are you connected to the online church of the unlimited people? Join Foursquare we see on all our social media platforms to get a real-time update on services, stream live programs from any part of the world, watch previous messages, join Christian topical conversations, and get a chance to win some prizes. Foursquare we see is live on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. You can connect with us via your phone social media applications. How? Select Facebook app on your phone app list and search for Foursquare Wusi. Open it and click on like. For Twitter, select Twitter app, search for Foursquare Wusi. Open it and click on follow. For Instagram, select Instagram app, search for Foursquare Wusi. Open it and click on follow. And for YouTube, select YouTube app on your phone, search for Foursquare Wusi. Open it and click on subscribe. If you don't have any of these apps on your phone, Go to your Play Store for Android devices or go to your Apple Store for iOS devices. Search for any of these social media apps and install them. After installation, you will need to log in with your app account username and password. And if you don't have an account with them yet, you will need to register. Click on Create an Account and fill in your basic information and get connected. First Gospel Church will say, we are the assembly of the unlimited people.